Viewer discretion is advised. The content in this video includes historical events and narratives that may be disturbing or unsettling to some audiences. Please proceed with caution. Are you ready to peek behind the bars of one of America's most infamous prisons? Buckle up and hold tight as we unlock the eerie, chilling secrets of the Nebraska State Penitentiary. You won't believe what we've found inside. Shocking life conditions at Nebraska State Penitentiary revealed. In the heart of Lincoln, Nebraska, stands a towering structure that has witnessed decades of history, the Nebraska State Penitentiary. Established in the late 19th century, this facility has been a silent custodian of the lives of countless inmates, each with a story overshadowed by the grim reality of their confinement. Recent revelations have brought to light the shocking conditions within its walls, prompting a re-evaluation of the treatment of those serving time and the purpose of incarceration itself. The Nebraska State Penitentiary was originally built to reform, but over the years, its mission seemed to blur, turning into a place where humanity often seemed to be forgotten. Inmates, some of whom were sentenced for minor offenses, found themselves in an environment that was less about rehabilitation and more about survival. This story is not just about the struggles within these walls, but also about the resilience of the human spirit and the push towards a more compassionate system. The first whisper of change came when a group of inmates, risking further punishment, reached out to a local journalist. They shared stories of overcrowding, where cells meant for one house three, forcing inmates to sleep in shifts due to lack of space. The air was thick, stale with the odor of despair. Despite these conditions, the inmates held on to hope, believing that exposing their reality could spark change. Healthcare, a basic human right, was severely lacking within the facility. Inmates with chronic conditions struggled to receive proper medication and care. Dental issues were often ignored until they became severe, causing unbearable pain. The story of an inmate named John, who suffered from diabetes, highlights the neglect. His repeated requests for medical evaluation were ignored until he was rushed to the hospital in a critical state. John's story is a stark reminder of the neglect that could no longer be overlooked. Sanitation was another critical issue. The shared facilities were not only inadequate but often unhygienic, leading to the spread of diseases. Inmates reported infestations of vermin and a constant battle against mold and mildew in their living spaces. The water was sometimes brown, tinged with rust, making it not just unpalatable but unsafe. Despite these harrowing conditions, the spirit of the inmates often shone through. They formed support networks, sharing their rations and medical supplies when the administration fell short. This camaraderie amidst hardship underscored the inherent human need for connection and mutual support. Educational and vocational training programs were promised as paths to rehabilitation but were frequently underfunded or non-existent. Those eager to learn and prepare for eventual reintegration into society found themselves with few resources. However, a small library, maintained by donations from charitable organizations, became a beacon of hope. Here, inmates taught each other, from basic literacy skills to legal education, striving to fill the gaps left by the system. The mental health of inmates suffered tremendously under these conditions. Isolation and a lack of mental health services led to a rise in incidents of self-harm and depression. Yet, in this darkness, Peer counseling programs emerged, spearheaded by inmates trained in basic psychological support. These programs, though informal, became vital to many, illustrating resilience and a profound understanding of shared suffering. Amidst growing public awareness, reform advocates and human rights organizations began to rally. They called for inspections, transparency, and reform, urging the state to uphold its duty of care. The voices from within and outside the walls were becoming too loud to ignore, signaling a potential shift towards genuine reform. The state's response was initially slow, but became more proactive as the pressure mounted. Investigations were launched, and plans were made to reduce overcrowding, improve healthcare access, and enhance sanitary conditions. These were steps in the right direction, 
though many argued that they were just the beginning of what was needed to transform the penitentiary into a true rehabilitation center. The community around the penitentiary played a crucial role in this transformation. Local volunteers, previously unaware of the extent of the issues, started programs to assist inmates with reintegration, offer legal advice, and provide emotional support. Their involvement was a testament to the power of community action in enacting systemic change. The administration at the penitentiary also began to see a shift. New leaders who believed in rehabilitation over punishment were appointed. They pushed for policies that prioritized education, mental health care, and respect for the dignity of all inmates. These changes did not erase the past, but began to mend the fabric of trust that had been torn so severely. Inmates who had once felt forgotten were now part of a dialogue about their future. Town hall meetings, previously formalities, turned into genuine forums for feedback and idea exchange. The inmates' council, once a token gesture, gained real power to negotiate conditions and programs. The media played an indispensable role, continuously highlighting the conditions at the penitentiary and the efforts towards reform. Journalists who had once reported on the penitentiary's failings now wrote about its steps towards change, keeping the public engaged and the administration accountable. Legal reforms began to take shape at the state level. Sentencing laws were scrutinized, with efforts made to reduce the incarceration of nonviolent offenders and expand alternatives to imprisonment. These legal changes were a reflection of a broader shift in how society viewed punishment and justice. The educational programs within the penitentiary saw a revival. With additional funding and support, these programs expanded. Inmates could now earn degrees, learn trades, and receive certifications that would aid them in their post-incarceration lives. The success stories of former inmates who through these programs found employment and a fresh start were a powerful motivator. Family ties, previously strained by the harsh realities of incarceration, began to heal. New policies allowed for more frequent and less restrictive visitations. For many inmates and their families, these moments of connection were vital for maintaining hope and building a future. Despite the progress, challenges remained. The infrastructure of the penitentiary, so long neglected, required significant upgrades. Funding was always a concern, with advocates continuously pushing for adequate resources to maintain and expand programs. The transformation at Nebraska State Penitentiary is ongoing. It is a testament to the belief that even in the darkest of places, change is possible with resilience, community support, and a commitment to human dignity. The path forward is paved with the stories of those who have suffered those who have fought for change and those who believe in the power of redemption. Thanks for journeying with us through the eerie corridors of the Nebraska State Penitentiary. If you were as fascinated by these hidden stories as we were, smash that like button, drop a comment with your thoughts, and don't forget to subscribe for more spine-chilling adventures. Until next time, keep digging deeper into history with us, and stay curious.